the freshman marathon monks have a very rough time. It takes two or three weeks to memorize the exact location of each station and the appropriate chants in Madras. Before then, Goja, unfamiliar with the route, sometimes get lost in the heavy fog that frequently blankets Hai and go miles out of their way. Despite the cleaning of the pathways during the pre-training period, there are still plenty of sharp edges or points to cut tender feet to the quick. By the third day, the legs and Achilles tendons begin to throb, and after a week, they are painfully swollen. Cuts and sores become infected, and monks who are raised in the southern part of Japan often develop frostbite. Most monks run a slight fever the first few weeks, suffer from diarrhea and hemorrhoids, and experience terrible pains in their backs and hips. By the 30th day, however, the worst of the discomfort is over, and around the 70th day, the Gojevs acquire the marathon monk stride, eyes focused about 100 feet ahead while moving along in a steady rhythm, keeping the head level, the shoulders relaxed, the back straight, and the nose and navel aligned. The monk also runs in time with the Fuda Meoho mantra he continually chants. Following successful completion of a 100-day term and participation in the summer retreat, a gojo may petition the Hai headquarters to be allowed to undertake the 1,000-day challenge. This involves being free of family ties, willingness to observe a 12-year retreat, and careful screening by the counselor of Elder Goja. So that is a passage from a book that's finished reading called The Marathon Monks of Hai. And, you know, the reason I started reading this book is because I heard about the Marathon Monks. And so I read a little bit more about it. At a high level, um, what I had learned before I read the book is that there is a sect of Buddhism in Japan called Tendai Buddhism. And the way the monks of this sect reach spiritual enlightenment is by partaking in a pilgrimage. And the pilgrimage is a, a route through the sacred spiritual mountains where, um, where they're living, where their monastery is. And in the beginning when they start, uh, the pilgrimage is, is a 100-day journey. So it's a 20-mile trip, a, effectively a marathon, every single day for 100 days. And then once they get past this 100-day kind of trial period, they can apply to go to the 1,000-day trial period which then becomes doing the exact same path. In some instances, it becomes a much longer path, 40, 60, 80 miles, and doing it again every day, repeating it day after day for a thousand days. Uh, this book is not for everyone. Um, if, you're, if, you're, if you're interested in the Marathon Monks of Hai, if you, know, if you heard this, you think it's kind of interesting to learn more about the story, but what I would first say is, go to YouTube, watch some videos, check out some documentaries. If that scratches your itch, I would stop there. However, if you want to learn a little bit more, pick up this book. There are, there are two kind of key lessons that I got from reading the book. That I, the first one is this idea of what exactly is possible. And a great example of that is, I'm going to put a chart up on the screen. But this is, this is the chart of the thousand day mountain journey that happens on Hai. And as you can see, it spans over a period of, of seven years. The first year is 100 days, where they consistently walk about 40 kilometers a day. And then they go into the sixth year, where there's 100 days, and that's now 60 kilometers long. And the seventh year, it's 84 kilometers long, as well as the second journey, they're around 40 kilometers long. So in total, they're walking over 1,000 days at varying distances. And these are 1,000, these are, you know, 100 consecutive days at a time. So it's pretty remarkable what the human body is capable of doing when it wants to. There's only been, um, you know, less than 100 monks who have ever completed a 1,000-day journey. But there are plenty of people who do the 100-day journey, uh, which in the monks itself is absolutely incredible. The, the second thing that, that I took with the book I thought was interesting was um, this idea of, how running can be a path towards calm, almost a, a, um, a calm, meditative, spiritual place. According to the book now, since all of us are here on a pilgrimage in one manner or another, the marathon monks of Hai have much to teach us about treading the path. Always aim for the ultimate. Never look back. Be mindful of others at all times. And keep the mind forever set of the way. 
If you do this, the marathon monks are telling us there's nothing that cannot be accomplished. And I think that about sums up. <laughs> yeah, I and I can't imagine a um, a better way to capture what these guys are trying to accomplish with with their practice. So as always, um, hope this is helpful. Check out the book if you're interested, and see you guys at the finish line.